Great. So good morning and welcome everyone to the third session of the IG Pilot uh, 2021 Developer Conference. And uh, we had a fantastic series of talks yesterday. Um, if you haven't uh, been were able to catch them uh, yesterday, then all of the videos from yesterday's talks are now up on the um, playlist, the De Developer Conference 2021 playlist on the RGPilot.org YouTube channel. And uh, there's actually multiple copies of each video. There's a one's recorded with individual videos per talk, but there's also uh, both the live stream complete session and there's um, also a video recording of, of the complete sessions done separately. So uh, they do have slightly different properties. The, the complete session ones have the talking heads. So you can see the, the person's expression as they're describing the, um, uh, what, they're, what they're working on. Uh, whereas the individual ones don't have the, the talking head on it. So you've got a choice of how you want to view the, uh, the talks. So um, this morning, we've got another great lineup. And um, we're starting off with a talk by uh, Julio Mendoza Mendoza, talking about Arjupalat in Latin American research. And after that, we're moving on to Tom Pittenger with the, the, an AP Perif update. Then uh, with, with, uh, Henry and the rest of the dev team together are discussing the documentation, uh, particularly the state of the RG Pilot documentation uh, as we get prepared for the 4.1 release. And uh, then we have a talk by Rob Mahoney and Peter Van Gore about the ANU visual odometry system, uh, which is looking really exciting. And uh, finally, we have the new vehicle, uh, Blimp Support, uh, Michelle Rousseau talking about Blimp support in Arjupilot. So we're going to kick off first of all with uh, Julio Mendoza Mendoza. So uh, over to you, Julio. Hello, everyone. I'm going to start with my talk. Okay, first of all, I'm going to share my um, my screen. Okay, I'm going to show you about the Ardu pilot in Latin American research. I'm Julio Mendoza. You can find me in UNAM. IPM and these uh, web pages. Uh, okay, uh, first the context. What what we are talking about Latin America? Uh, Latin America are developing countries or regions based on the classification of the International Monetary Fund, whose official or predominant language is uh, Romance ones, a Neo-Latin language as Spanish, French, or Portuguese. This is Latin America. Uh, second. A second segmentation is based on drone research and drone development, in, in, this, in this case, aircraft, watercraft, and welded vehicles. The, well, this is, in, this is convenient in order to zoom into particular countries that had more research on the field according to the IEEE, have more patents and developments on the field according to the WIPO, and have more industrial activity related to the field according to companies as DGI. Uh, also, this shortens my slides because despite the fact that each one of the other countries has a lot of particular projects, they are, they are not so numerous. So in this case, I'm going to talk about Mexico, Colombia, Brazil, Argentina, and Chile. Uh, next. What do we do? Uh, okay, we do things with budget uh, with not so much budget. When we had budget, uh, we do military and aerospace application and companies. In this case, uh, most of them are focused on airplanes. Uh, examples are Embraer from Brazil and a little company called Oaxaca Aerospace from Mexico. This is with budget. But with not so much budget, we do Baker Robotics. Most of them with Chinese and open source components. Uh, for example, the quadcopter kit in our region, the quadcopter that you can see in your monitors, uh, could be bought in a region with one month on a standard researcher salary. Uh, so it's expensive and we, uh, we, we, we require a Chinese and open source components. In this case, the famous PixHub 2.4.8 and they are the pilot libraries. Um, for this reason, our research are mainly the algorithms, in this case, controllers, filters, estimators, artificial intelligence, patents and intellectual property, and a lot of texts, included books, articles, etc. Here we use all kinds of free software. Uh, when I say all since the, um, the uh, open projects to piracy, disunfortunately. Uh, which, has which of course is more accessible than hardware and physical components. 
let's move on to what the aforementioned countries develop. Argentina. For this country, what I found is that they developed a lot of research at each university. And there are two researchers, two main researchers, who are the regular and main reference in this nation. Both of them are experts in mobile robotics and control. They research focus at vehicle formation, tracking algorithms, SLAM, visual surveying, and agricultural robots, also interfaces design uh, as software and autopilots. In this case, this person is Ricardo Carelli from National University of San Juan. Uh, he does mobile robots, uh, drones, and their applications. Uh, curiously, he obtained his PhD in Mexico and is a regular collaborator of the Brazilian researcher that we will see later. Uh, here you could uh, find his um, personal webpage. Uh, he is Ricardo Carelli. The other is Juan Giribet from University of Buenos Aires. He does uh, drone filter and flight, indoor navigation methods with Wi-Fi, and developed his own autopilots, uh, a kind of Argentinian pixel. He was with the Argentinian Space Agency, and of course, here you have uh, his personal webpage. Okay, uh, now let's move to Brazil. Uh, as I told you, Brazil has its own airplane manufacturer, Embraer. So they produce a commercial and military airplanes. Most of their aerospatial research engine is aimed to this industry. However, concerning to our war of unmanned vehicles with Arduino pilot, they also have notorious wars. Some examples are, and you have Edison Piñaton de Freitas, and Douglas da Silva Jr., Lucas Vago Santana, Alexandre Santos Brandao, uh, here are their universities, and well, they they particular in particular develops sailboats with Arduino pilot and coordinated robotics and multi-agent systems in the same field. In the case of Lucas and Alexandre, they have been working with a lot of indoor navigation, flight formations, low transportation, and sensor fusion algorithms. Uh, they applied the power drones, but we must remember that Arduino pilot has support for those vehicles, and that, that the result can be extended to other vehicles. They are from Brazil. Maker Spaces Place, uh, where they develop and teach drone applications. Uh, an example is Drone Lab from Brazil. Here you have some uh, sprint screens. Uh, they make competitions, they make tests, and well, this is a very known place in this, in this country. Let's move to Chile and Colombia. Chile and Colombia are cases where the research on robotic vehicles and drones are available all over the country, but most of the projects are under the supervision of three entities the army, private universities, and private investors. Inside the OID, all the available papers and thesis you could find from modeling and control to environmental, agricultural, surveillance, and delivery applications. A good example of what they do is uh, the Colombian Kiwi, Kiwi Campus and their Kiwi bots that they are mm, designed for delivered food. But well, this is an example that, that is made in Colombia. In the case of Chile, when talking about robotic vehicles, it is worth mentioned to Javier Ruiz del Solar. This is a prolific researcher in mobile robotics algorithms. Uh, you can find him in University of Chile, and here you have you, uh, sorry, his webpage. Uh, okay, concerning co to Colombia, more than specific people, the formation institution and are commonly found in all the Colombian drone projects. Uh, as I told you, military and private uh, founders. But of course, if you want a name, here you have the contact of Rafael Padilla. Uh, he is uh, part of the UAB World Federation in South America. And well, if you want to know more what, uh, what is Colombia doing, uh, contact this, this person. And now with Mexico, due to the fact that my country is neighbor of the US, uh, we also have a triple approach uh, as in the case of Brazil. So we have researchers, developers, and industrials. Uh, as the other countries, all Mexican universities develop drone projects, but we interact with a kind of uh, a local center called Simbestaf, and concretely, Yumi Lafmia. Uh, in fact, all of us have a kind of participation with this center, like partners, teachers, etc. Here you have um, their webpage. Yumi Lafmia is a dual Mexican-French research center on drones. Uh, they do terrestrial aircraft and watercraft. They offer master and PhD degrees. Uh, their leader is Rogelio Lozano, one of the most important Latin American researchers on robotics and drones. In fact, you can find around six books and a lot of papers about the topic right in Machine. 
Uh, other people is, um, other person is Jordi Muñoz, uh, concerning to the pilot world. Uh, originally, he found a 3D yarn, but now is with Mayan Robotics, and he produced um, a lot of models of uh, autopilots, including his own Pixel version, all compatible with Arduino. So, if you want a novel autopilot, you can consult his web page. Also, as I told you, we do industrial cases. Uh, we develop application for the small and micro scale enterprises. For example, this company that offers solutions with mobile robots. In this image, we can see a kind of a rosy from Jetsons, but used for transporting glass bottles during, during their manufacture process. Uh, in this case, they use uh, a combination of Cube with Arduino Pilot. Another thing that we have in my country is uh, an, a a public high school with a technical specialization on drones uh, called Conalep. Uh, they, are, they are stated we developed a lot of robotics vehicle applications where in general a couple of researchers, a research center, an institution or a company are our main reference. In this case for budget, for knowledge, for distribution or diffusion. And almost all of the researchers are related with the aforementioned ones. Most of our research has agricultural rescue or military applications. And well, Ardu Pilot and Pixel represent around of, um, about 30% of the tools because we develop our own autopilots at 10% of the cases, and the rest of people use Arduino, Raspberry, or direct microcontroller coding, in this case, ABRs or PICs. In general, we use open or free technologies. Uh, our culture of web sharing, in this case, GitHub, YouTube, etc., is not so usual. Instead, we produce more papers, local conferences, and theses. Uh, with the session of Brazil, we focus mainly in education, software, and algorithms. Industrial application and large-scale projects are reserved to military or commercial airplanes, foreign agreements, or small-scale industries. Uh, currently, technologies arrive into our countries two years later. Uh, years ago, this happened with decades, uh, with decades of separation. Uh, that's explaining why um, for example, we talk with, about technologies that, that are a little old, two years. Uh, okay, about me, I'm a mechatronics in engineer with a postgraduate degrees on robotics and control at UNAN and IPN, two of the most important Mexican universities. I'm an enthusiastic about our pilot. In this topic, I had written two books, one in 2020 and recently in February of this year. Uh, the first one is also available in Korean and coming soon, it will be available a Chinese version. Uh, talking about the 2020 book, uh, it is available in Apres Springer also in Golden Valley in South Korea and coming soon in China Machine Press. Uh, here you have um, their corresponding web pages. Um, the book is based on previous version, as I told you, two years um, of our pilot, but it's a good reference for beginners and intermediate users, even advancing ones. It consists of three parts, elementary concepts and commands, where I told about uh, basic input and output sensors, and actuators and more. Uh, the second is advancing commands with multicopter applications. Uh, in this case, UR and telemetry is the memory usage, time commands and more. And we finish, we finish the book uh, because we are a lot of coders, as you can see, uh, with real time concepts and commands uh, where we talk about the real time scheduler and some examples. Uh, continuing with this, uh, for some reason, reader report that they couldn't find this in the included software. So here you have it. If you have the opportunity, please uh, print the screen. And I continue with the, with the other book. The other book is um, available since February of the years. Equal with the same uh, publisher, Apple Springer. Here you have um, the web page. This book is by Excel, a short and complete course with a maker and scientific approaches. It is designed for assimilating a, at least two years or three of wrong knowledge in just a seat or 12 months in order that the readers could develop their, pro their drone projects in a faster way. Also, readers could extend their knowledge to other kind of aircraft and vehicles, and it has five chapters, uh, drone concepts and design, 
where I talk to you about components, standardization, history, et cetera. The second is drone modeling, where you can find uh, kinematics, dynamics, allocation models, in this case, useful for mixture design, linear and nonlinear models. Uh, drone control, where I talk to you about uh, linear and nonlinear approaches uh, from, from smooth flight to geometric control and acrobatics. Uh, the fourth section, the fourth chapter is drone simulation, a faster way for simulating a drone by using Simulink. And I finished the book with, with the chapter of drone implementation, where I talk about tips for filtering, telemetry, programming, etc. Uh, why did I write these books and some suggestions? Um, okay, there are a lot of material about Arduino and Raspberry, maybe hundreds of books, courses, and magazines each year. But what I found with Arduino Pilot is, is that our community only had the discussion forums and the main web page. And well, we must remember that there are people that require a book or live courses. As the only SDK with a simple real-time scheduler, I wanted to spread this knowledge, um, this software, to the world. Also, I really think, think with the pilot, but I think that develop a kind of easy to install and use interface as, as the Arduino IDE could be amazing for, for our community. Also, with direct examples, including a kind of Hello Motor code, as in the Arduino IDE. Uh, maybe mocks and official courses. Uh, in fact, I will pay for, for a pilot development courses and even uh, for official certifications of our pilot. Uh, maybe an official Ardu pilot's autopilot, as in the old times, the 20, 2020, uh, no, the 2012 uh, autopilot from, from our pilot. Uh, maybe a kind of design your vehicle model in the mission planner interface that could, could go beyond the standard vehicles available. Uh, well, these are my suggestions, okay? And that's all that we do in, in Latin America with Arduino Pilot. If you had questions, uh, come on. Well, it's cool to see the, um, you know, the, uh, the overview of how uh, Arduino Pilot is being used. It's always, um, you know, as a developer, it's always quite, uh, you know, encouraging to see how it's how it's being used, see, you know, to see the the code that you're that you've been writing actually get put to use. So that was really interesting to see, especially like the sailboat stuff. I wasn't expecting that. So the, so thanks for that. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Julio. So uh, where do you where does the community that um, sort of Latin community tend to congregate? Is it is it using our discussion server, discussed by pilots at all, or do you have your own communication channels, sort of language specific ones, perhaps? Uh, well, as I told you, this is not common among us, but what we do is um, uh, conferences. Uh, for example, we have a, a one called um, Red UAS that is developed uh, each uh, two, two years. And in this kind of conferences, uh, we talk about uh, our developments, about the courses. In this case, I I found Ardu Pilot through my partners at Umi Lafins Investap. And uh, well, as I told you, uh, they uh, teach me this knowledge, and I uh, spread this knowledge to the world through my books. This is the way that we uh, communicate. Right. Okay. I, I was hoping there might be some sort of more, um, you know, how the users actually get assistance. I'm, I'm guessing they use our discussion forums, but I was just curious if you had your own forums or, or something like that. I've just, I'll put a link up to the um, source code um, that I noticed that in the slides, uh, it seems to be an image, so it's not, uh, um, not clickable. So that's the link to the GitHub repository they've got there. Um, and just because they seem to be image links, you can't actually click on them. Um, and so the first one, I haven't typed that in yet. That's a slightly harder one to type in. So if you could possibly um, either update that to be a text link or, or pop it in the chat so people can actually follow that link. Yes, I um, could share. Yeah, it's just a little bit hard to type in that uh, <laughs> get ha the hash, you know, in the Dropbox hash accurately. Um, so uh, it'd be nicer to be able to go and, and have a look directly. All right. So uh, are there any more questions for Julio? Well, okay. So thank you very much again, Julio. Much appreciate your, um, your talk this morning. Um, so uh, Tom, do you, are you ready to start a bit early? I am. Yes. Sorry. Ah, fantastic. All right. 
So in that case, I'll need to grant you. Um, so do people want to break it all or go straight on? It's we've only been going for a little bit, so I think we can probably go straight on. Um, I'm just going to find Tom in the list here, so I can add him to the ability to. There you go. There you should be able to share screen now, Tom. Okay, and I've put a link to Tom's presentation into the um, schedule. So if you want to follow along the slides there, you can. And of course, there's a link to Julio's presentation there as well. So um, over to you now, Tom. Hi, well, um, thank you, everyone.